Hey guys. <clears throat> hey guys, it's Diamond and I am here to kind of like have a talk with you guys. Um, I don't really know if I'm going to upload this or not yet. I'm just going to see how it goes because it's just been heavy on my mind and it's just something that I kind of wanted to just make a video about and I feel like expressing myself and really talking is something that would be good for me and I feel like other people could relate to what I have to say and that it's like something important so yeah um I don't know exactly how the video is gonna go I don't know exactly what I'm gonna say or anything like that but um yeah you guys might see Gemini in the back here. She likes to come and like poke out of the stairs. So yeah, if you guys see anything moving around or you hear anything, it's Gemini running around. So yeah. Um, so as you guys know, Father's Day, as you guys know, Father's Day recently passed and um, I really don't ever talk about my other half of my family, my father's side. I don't really talk about my father at all. Um, but you guys see my mom a lot, whether it be, whether it be on the channel or whether it be on social media or whatever that is. So I do get questions sometimes, not that much, cause I think most people kind of get it, um, about where my dad is or what my relationship with, is with my father or whatever. So, um, since Father's Day was coming up or Father's Day was around, I just been thinking about it and just thinking about talking about it. So that's what I came to do today so yeah uh, I guess I'm just gonna try to jump right in I don't really know like I said I don't have a exact plan but I really just want to express myself and talk about my experience and like what I've gone through with like my dad and stuff so yeah so um, me and my father do not it like I don't even want to call my father me and me and the person that my mom cr created me with, I don't even know what you want to call it, um, don't have any sort of relationship at this point. We don't talk at all. We haven't talked directly in years. I believe it's been years and I haven't seen him in years. Um, the speaking part at this point is probably based on me because I just haven't wanted to have communication and that's based on you know giving chances and that's based on you know him just overall missing being missing in my life so I've decided now as an adult that I do not want to participate in that kind of relationship where it's not something that's going to be consistent in my life because that's not good for me and it's not good for anybody at all um, to just allow someone to play with your emotions or to keep giving chances. And I hear all the time that, you know, your family, that's your only family that you're going to get. And you should just give them unlimited chances. But I never really like to live like that because, you know, if you keep giving people chances, they're going to keep on taking them. And you kind of got to see what people do with the chances that you do give them and if they just shit on them then why would you keep doing it and that's really how i feel about it and that's what i think um so oh uh, i mean there's been like so many times i'm 23 years old at this point there's been so many chances that i've given for that person to be in my life to step up as an adult as a father and do the right thing even if it was like starting out as a friendship me and my mom also did not have the best relationship when i was growing up but we've been able to develop that into an amazing relationship at this point that i'm at right now being 23 me and my mom are like best friends and we talk about everything and we hang out all the time and you know everything so to me that's everything and i'm so happy that we have been able to build that kind of relationship honestly because that's everything. Of course, I want to have a great relationship with my family. I don't I don't want to not have a relationship with any part of my family. Like, I want to be around my family all the time. 
my uncle is now like we have a really great relationship as well i always have wanted to like work on my relationship with my family because i feel like it's wasting time that's very valuable with people that you know could be really valuable and important in your life so yeah um i'm gonna just start off with like you know things that i remember and stuff that really contributed to me getting to this point that i'm at right now which is that i just don't really want to have any kind of relationship um because i've been open for so long and now i feel like it's the time to really close that chapter and move on and i feel like it's only fair that i at least get to like say my piece um so yeah my mother and my father conceived me when they were very young in high school so it's like of course i can take into consideration that neither one of them was ready to have a child i i'm like so happy that my mom decided to you know keep me at such a young age because that is like that could be detrimental to your life and it's life-changing you know not everybody would have made that decision like how they did and i appreciate my mom for that a lot because you know i'm here and um you know we're here so i really appreciate my mom for that a lot because that she sacrificed a lot for me to have me at such a young age so i really appreciate her for that um i believe i see pictures i don't necessarily remember but i believe when i was a baby that um he was pretty involved um when i was younger younger when i used to live in los angeles I mean, I won't say he was super involved, but I would see him. My mother and father's relationship uh, didn't work out like a long time ago when when I was super duper young. So um, I never really thought or expected my mother and my father to be together at all. And it hasn't happened. So, um, yeah, first, the very first um the very first thing I can remember, like, a feeling, like, super duper disappointed was there was times where, like, I would think that he was going to pick me up from school. And when I say this, I'm talking, like, young, like, super young, like, elementary, but, like, beginning, like, first grade, you know. And I have one memory that I always think of how, like, I was talking all day about how he was going to pick me up and talking to my teacher and saying, you know, my dad's picking me up, my dad's picking me up, you know, just excited. Um, because when I was younger, I always, like, was so excited. Even though my dad was inconsistent in my life, I would be excited about, like, the times where we did see each other or the times that we did spend. I would always be excited about that. Um, I do have siblings on his side that I would pretty much only get to see when I would be with him or around him. So... I would always get excited and I remember one specific time he was supposed to pick me up and I was bragging all day as a young girl, like very young, a little kid, like a damn near a toddler, but not a toddler, y'all know what I mean. And then my mom ended up coming to pick me up and my teacher was just like, yeah, you know, she's been talking all day about her D-A-D-D-Y was going to pick her up. I don't even know if my mom will remember this, but I honestly remember it. and. She spelled it, but I knew what she was spelling, you know? I, I knew what was going on at the time. And I think people don't think that kids realize or pick up on that kind of stuff, and they do. And so that's like one of the first like disappointments I could really remember. Um, like I said, overall, he just wasn't really consistent. Even in like contributing to anything, my mom was just a single mom, basically. Uh, fast forward, still inconsistent throughout the years um probably the time when i knew that our relationship wasn't gonna go anywhere at all was in high school i think one of my earlier years in high school and um i had needed i wanted some school clothes and so i had asked about school clothes and I believe that he said that he would give me money, like help me out for some school clothes. And then he ended up saying later that he wasn't going to be able to do it or he couldn't do it or whatever the case is. Now, it's really not a big deal because it's just school clothes. But in my mind, what else do you do for me? 
that if I have like a request like once in a blue moon because it's not like it wasn't the kind of dynamic where I would constantly go back and be like I need this I need this I need that I need that I mean he was on child support but from what I know from what I've seen it wouldn't get paid most of the time um so if, I feel like if I ask for something as your child you should at least do your best to try to do something and that was just another instance where I was disappointed because nothing was done like so that's like another disappointment that I could remember because at that point I was older and I was able to to really understand what was going on and I didn't want to keep on setting myself up for disappointment so I just decided not to I don't exactly remember what age I was but that was kind of when I like halfway washed my hands of the situation and just honestly started not to care about speaking to my dad having a relationship with him or anything like that that was probably the start where i really was like i really just don't even care to continue setting myself up for disappointment after disappointment after disappointment so um hmm. another instance that i remember was it was some father's day and I believe, well, not I believe, this, it had to be after the whole school clothing incident. And to be fair and to be honest, I didn't necessarily express myself and say, like, you know, what I wanted to say. Because at the time, I wasn't an adult and I couldn't just be like, you know, that's bullshit. Because that's really how I felt. Like, that's bullshit. Um... But I just decided just to remove myself from the situation, kind of. And I believe that that's when I just stopped really sending texts, stopped really, like, communicating, like, as much at all. Um, and at that point, I probably hadn't seen him for years. I remember, like, when I had a boyfriend, like, early on, he wanted to, like, FaceTime and, like, talk to them. And I allowed it, but I wouldn't allow him to really like dig into or press anyone because you don't really have the right to do that now if you were in the living room when somebody came to pick me up for a date okay now that's different but you know on facetime over the phone i literally told like my boyfriend at the time if he says anything i want to like give me the phone back because we're not doing that you know so after that i didn't feel the need to reach out i didn't feel the need to say anything really i believe i just like stopped texting stopped talking for the most part and I really washed my hands of the situation. At the same time, um, my younger brother has his dad and him and my mom's relationship was a little bit more stable, at least for a longer period of time. So I always felt like I at least had some kind of father figure. So I didn't need to keep setting myself up for that kind of disappointment in reality. So I just stopped. Um, and there was one point where it was Father's Day and my grandmother on my father's side texted me to tell me to text my dad happy father's day and i didn't respond and my little sister on my father's side also texted me to tell me to tell my dad happy father's day and i don't believe i responded to either one of them and i didn't text them happy father's day because why i think it's bullshit that People would text me to tell me that I need to text somebody to congratulate them on being a father when there was never a father to me in my life. That I remember. Not talking about when I was this small. Not talking about when I was this small. But my life. My whole life overall. And I felt that that was very, like, I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. And I believe I expressed that to my mom just to tell her, like, kind of like, how dare these people even try to get in between me and him? That, like, that's my dad and I'm his daughter. That's, that's what our relationship is. I don't need any grandmother. I don't need anybody to tell me how I need to interact with him. What should be done is people need to tell him not me i'm the child and i've always stood by that and i've always i will always stand by that i'm the child and he's the adult i might be an adult now but he's the adult and he's the father he's the one that made that choice i just think it's very unfair for people to put pressure on me to contact him including him 
Another thing I remember is all the time, like whenever we would talk, he would say like, oh, you never call me, you never call me, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, why would I reach out to you? Like, am I not the child? Like, does that, how does that work? I received texts and, and communication for holidays on my birthday, holidays, stuff like that. But you expect me to just reach out and call you? How does that work? I really don't understand. As a parent, you should take an initiative. That's for everybody. If you're a parent, that is your child. You should take an initiative, like you should step up. But I feel like that was never done. But what was done was a lot of pressure was put on me to try to build a relationship, to try to maintain a relationship, to call, to reach out, to do these things. Why, when I'm the child, I'm not the parent. <laughs> I'm literally not the parent. So to me, it just doesn't make any sense. And it never really did. So I kind of just let it go from then and just never thought about it. Um, fast forward to my 20th birthday. So I went out of town for my 20th birthday and I was originally staying with a friend. I was visiting the city where my father is now located and also my grandmother lives there as well. Um, so I went and I was staying with a friend and she ended up having to go out of town last minute. So I didn't really have any other like accommodation set up. Um, and at the time, like you know, when you're 20, there's only like motels, and type things that you can check into because you're supposed to be 21 with like credit card, all that. So um, I contacted my grandmother and I kind of knew that by contacting her, I would have some kind of interaction with my dad because I assumed that he would not just let me be there at my grandmother's house and not say anything to me. Um, so yeah, I assumed right. I didn't directly contact him, but it just worked out that way. I had an amazing time staying with my grandmother. Like I love my grandmother. If anything, she's always, um, you know, at least done what she could. She sends birthday cards. She's always done that. And you know, she came and visited us in Vegas a few times. And you know, I appreciate that. I appreciate that she did what she could do. Um, so while I was there, he comes and visits and um i believe the first time he came with his wife and i believe his wife has five or six kids i'm not really sure none of which belong to my father so i met her and if you want me to be completely honest i didn't really want to i had like a lot of back and forth with my mom about it and my mom has always encouraged me to be like very nice and compassionate toward my father and be nice and not really say how I really feel because she is way nicer than me and she just, I guess, wanted me to spare his feelings. And I always took that into consideration until I became an adult. When I became an adult, I just decided that that doesn't really work for me. Not saying how I feel, doesn't help anything it doesn't make me feel better it hadn't helped me in his relationship at all it hadn't done anything except for i feel make him feel like everything was okay so fast forward and um two things happened on this trip me and my father and one of his good friends ended up going out and drinking a little bit and you know we just basically started talking and um you know i was asked like how do i feel about my father like do i love him and i i said like i don't really know him and we're all sitting there at the table i said i don't really know him but i mean i have love for him because he's my dad but other than that i don't really know him and i also said that I don't really consider him as my dad. I usually call him by his first name. And I also said that I consider my stepdad to be my dad because that's who was around and that's who was around me. 
um he got emotional about that and you know I, I I can't change how I feel just because it hurts someone's feelings because my feelings are still valid at the end of the day and you got to realize that like your feelings are valid just because someone else's feelings get hurt by that it doesn't mean that your feelings are hurt so it doesn't mean that you don't get to express yourself so I told him those things things that I've always felt that I could never say because I was a child and you know Adults told me, you know, be nice, blah, 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 and I just felt like I couldn't really say those things until then. When I'm grown, I'm traveling here by myself, I basically came to visit him. So, yeah, I expressed all that stuff. But what I also said was, if at any time, like, you want to start a relationship, I'm open to that. Because I'm not going to hold on to all the bullshit because that's not good for me. And it's not good for anyone and it's not good for him and I said that and I I said like I don't want that to like impact you and impact your health like that's not good to feel like that or that's not good to feel bad because he says that he feels bad and you know waterworks and all those things always seem to happen whenever it gets to this subject so I don't want that I don't want anybody to feel like bad I don't want anybody to like feel like that kind of stress like I can only imagine how it feels to feel like you fail like as a father or like that you have a you know that you have a child running around and that you guys have no communication and you're first born at that. I basically I feel like I still took the first step. I came down to where they are. I decided, okay, cool, I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna say what I gotta say, but I'm also say that I'm open, like I don't want to be resentful. I don't want to be bitter. I don't want to be none of that. I want to be able to like let that go and be able to build a relationship. That's what me and my mom have been able to do. All that shit from when I was young that me and my mom used to go through, I don't care about because we have been able to like get past all that and really form a bond that is so much deeper and so much more important than any of that stupid shit that we used to argue about or not speak over or not be good over and i value that so much more than sitting and being mad or being bitter or saying fuck you or blah 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 like i would rather build and become something and everybody be happy and i told him that and the other person I was there also reinforced that, like, you see, you know, you just got to take the first step. And I also told him, you know, it's up to you. You just got to take the first step. And if you do that, then I'm good. Like, we can do this. We can do it. And I meant that when I said it. So that was three years ago. And here we are. So this, after this, still on this trip. He invited me to dinner with, I guess, his family to meet, to introduce me to his new family. And I show up late and everybody's just basically waiting on me. Like, <laughs> I didn't have ways to ride. Like, I don't know how that city is. I'm just Ubering around, you know? So where I'm at and where they are is super far. The traffic is horrible, so. It takes me a long time to get there. And when I get there, they're all sitting and it's just very awkward. I don't really want to talk. I didn't really want to meet them. And I didn't express that because I tried to just give it a chance because I did say I was open to working on things and getting past shit. So I went. I didn't say much because I just didn't have much to say, honestly. Um, yeah. I think it's kind of a slap in the face. I feel like it's kind of a slap in the face for me to come down there and you say you want to establish a relationship with me or at least act that way. And then you introduce me to like your new family that you've been like taking care of, but you didn't even take care of me at all. And your wife, 
like what part of that has to do with me and what part of that has to do with us building our relationship I don't want to have a relationship with your new family if I don't even know you why would I want to know them my mom has made excuses for my dad a lot and I know that she just does it because she feels bad and I don't want her to. It's not her fault. But I'm tired of making excuses for people just blatantly, just, just, I don't know. I'm not gonna make excuses. I don't even know you. Why would I wanna know like your new family that you actually take care of, that you're actually active in these kids' life your stepkids, but you have your own kids that are just scattered and missing their actual father in their life. But you are a great stepfather, stepfather of the year to all these kids. And I'm supposed to sit and mingle and be cool and want to talk to them and want to be friends. I don't. I don't, but I did because I just wanted to like move forward. After that, after that trip, my birthday is in January, so it was probably around Super Bowl time. And I believe that that was the first time that he called me since the trip. And you know, I thought that that was his way of reaching out and just doing what we had discussed, which was taking the first step. He calls and I remember it. I remember it so vivid. He calls and he's like, oh yeah, you know, your sister wants to talk to you. And I'm like, my sister? And he's referring to one of his stepkids. And I was like, oh, you mean your stepchild? And he said, yeah. He puts her on the phone and She's asking me about some hair because she has a prom or homecoming. I believe it's prom, prom. She has prom coming up. So she asked about some hair that I had. And then they were basically getting at, they wanted me to do some kind of wig for her, some kind of hair so that she could wear it to prom. Or they wanted me to sell her one of the wigs that I had. So I gave him a price. And he asked me for a discount a father discount and yeah that's what the call was for he wanted me to give him hair or sell him hair with a fatherly discount for his stepdaughter's prom immediately after getting off that phone call I called my mom so livid like because I couldn't understand how anybody would think that that works or like that's okay. And it just gives me to a point where I feel like, are you oblivious? Like, that's not, be, that's not creating a relationship with me. That's not doing anything to contribute like to a relationship with me. Honestly, that just feels like you're only calling me because you need something. And you need something for one of your new kids, for your new family. At that point is when I really like washed my hands of the situation and I was like, yeah, I'm done because I thought that that was really unfortunate and really fucked up and it really bothered me a lot. And I think that like anyone should know better. Fast forward to a funeral and it's a it's a funeral with someone on my father's side of the family that was happening here in Vegas. So we all went and I really didn't want to go. I really didn't. But I didn't want to make my mom go alone. So that's the only reason that I went because she was going to go regardless and just to be nice. So I just decided, cool, I'm going to go. 
went once again I expressed myself I was drinking you know it's it's a rough situation for me to be in those kind of situations that I really don't want to be in to that capacity so you know me and mom were drinking we we're just having a good time but of course one thing led to another and me and my father talked and I told him how I felt I told him how I felt about him and his new family and he doesn't even take care of me or never took care of me but he has this new family that he's posting and I'm supposed to like double tap I guess I'm supposed to be happy about that or I'm supposed to be like but you couldn't do that for me so of course I'm going to feel a way you know birthday posts father's day posts family group photos that like is like oh okay I missed something actually because you know like I said I'm just talking off the top of my head really and just expressing myself that's all this is it's just me expressing myself and hopefully it helps somebody or hopefully somebody understands or can relate when I graduated high school I had made it up in my mind because like I said I had already not been talking to my father prior to going to visit where he lived for my 20th birthday I had not been speaking because I had already kind of like washed my hands in the situation because I didn't want to keep setting myself up for disappointment when I graduated high school, I did not invite my biological father, but I did invite my stepfather. And I didn't want my biological father to be there. I was told that it was stated that he was going to come regardless. And that shit really pisses me off. Because why on earth? Do you think that you deserve to be there to see me accomplish something like that when you did nothing to contribute? Nothing. But you want to be in a celebration? It's just shit like that. It's just shit like that. That it just doesn't make any sense to me at all. So with all this, with all that has happened, at this point, there's no communication. None. And Father's Day passed, and I'm, I'm on Facebook, which was the last social media that we actually were connected on. We are no longer friends on Facebook now, based on me. And I'm just seeing these Father's Day posts, to him and people commenting happy father's day and all that but it's like of course i'm gonna feel a way about that you know it gets to a point where you can't help but feel bitter you can't help but resent that person for basically forgetting about you and going off and the things that they couldn't do for you, they do for people that are not even related to them. And time after time, you're supposed to be okay and you're supposed to give chances and you're supposed to forgive and forget and let's try to move forward. But time and time again, you get let down and disappointed. That shit sucks. That shit sucks. And I think it's unfortunate, and I've expressed this to my mom, that that's not understandable, that maybe I wouldn't want to see all that, or, you know, maybe keep your, your real kids in mind. But I don't feel like he's ever considered my feelings. So I'm tired of considering this. I'm not gonna be nice. I'm not gonna play nice. I'm not gonna say Facebook friends and so we can double tap each other's posts so that he could feel like that's a relationship, a father-daughter relationship. It's not. It's not. It's really not. So I'm not gonna keep engaging in even that. Like even that little bit of that is it's just done. Like I'm just done.
if somebody can't like understand that, if somebody can't like just understand like, then I don't know. What has been bothering me for a while and what prompts me to make this video is that I hate that my mom and other people in my family believe that I'm going to have some type of problem or issue in the future based on him. Because, you know, daddy issues are a thing and if your father wasn't in your life, then you're fucked up. And I hate that somebody that did so little for me and had so little real impact on my life still has an impact on my life because I'm fucked up because I didn't have my dad there. Like, how is that fair that somebody that wasn't around still affects me? And still could lead to like in the future me having this problem or that problem or doing this or doing that. I don't even want to give him that credit at all. I don't want to have daddy issues. Cause it's like you don't even deserve that. You don't even deserve me to even have an issue or be sad or even be bitter or even resent or even any feelings at all because like what have I gotten like what have I gotten out of like this relationship I've gotten nothing out of it no no love nothing no time nothing I've gotten nothing out of this relationship but I'm supposed to let it impact me negatively over and over and over for the rest of my life because somebody decided that they didn't want to be there I refuse I refuse to fucking be fucked up be fucked up in the head just because he made a decision I refuse. <sighs> I really refuse. And if that means I gotta sit here and spill my fucking guts so I can wash my hands of the situation, that's what I'm gonna do because I refuse to give somebody that did not give a fuck time after time after time even a smidgen of credit of anything that has to do with me today. None. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. So I decided and I made post a post that, you know, it's easy to be bitter and it's easy to be like spiteful or resent your your whoever wasn't in your life. But I just try to take that and really like commend and appreciate the people that were in my life and that have been like solid like my mom did this shit like she did like the best she could and that's why even more like the more and more i get older the more and more i hate that we wasted so much time because like you know she was doing the shit by herself so she really did the best that she could she really did but I can't say that he did the best he could because he didn't do anything. He didn't do anything. Nothing. Except give me daddy issues. And I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want to resent my father I don't want to be bitter I don't want to be none of that but at this point I don't want to be anything I've accepted what our relationship is and I can't put any more energy into something that will not do anything good for me but like will do bad things for me like have me disappointed and upset and feeling resentment and feeling bitter I don't want to do that 
I don't want to put myself in those situations. I don't want to feel those feelings. I don't want to have daddy issues, you know? So if that means I got to work through this shit right now, I'm going to do that shit right now. And, if, and for me, working through that just means like understanding that I didn't have a dad. But that's okay because I had an amazing ass mom. Like we might not got along, but I never felt like I was going without. I never felt, you know, like I was left out or anything. I never felt like that. I always felt complete and whole. And I never was one of those girls that was like looking for love in the wrong places and things like that because I didn't feel loved. I never had that. But you know what I also didn't have? I also don't have those memories of having a father there. I don't have those memories. I saw a um, tweet on Twitter and it was a, a father bringing his daughter flowers because he was passing by her job and he just decided to just drop them off. And the, it was a quote tweet and it was like, you know, some of you guys don't know how lucky you are to have a dad to show you how to love and how, how you're supposed to be treated. I didn't have that, but I figured it out on my own and I didn't make the wrong decisions and I didn't go looking for love in the wrong places and I didn't find somebody like him. Thank goodness. <sighs> Father's Day, I just decided to let my mom know how much I appreciate her and how it works out for me to only have one parent because I can just show her all the love and appreciation that she really deserves, honestly, because she did this. Like she raised two kids alone, like a lot of other single moms do. And that is amazing. So although people say like, you know, it's a, dad's holiday it's this it's that it's father's day you know don't ruin it don't take away but it's not that i'm trying to take away from anything but i'm not going to give somebody a title or a, oh happy father's day or, or a text or whatever like, when they don't even deserve it at least my mom deserves it my mom deserves it my grandmother deserves it for stepping in those were the two people that were there my uncle if i have any, cons the most consistent male figure in my life would have to be my uncle, my mom's twin brother. So my mom's side of the family is the only people that have really been there consistently and that deserve that kind of recognition and deserve all that. They deserve all the love, all the appreciation, all everything. And I think that it's possible for me to, instead of being bitter about what I didn't have, being upset about the love that he didn't show me and the, the, all the things that he didn't show me, instead of doing that, I just want to be happy about what I got from my mom, who was so amazing, and what I got from my uncle, who we've grown so close, and what I got from my grandmother, who is so amazing and would do anything for me. I'm gonna choose. Instead of being angry, instead of being bitter, instead of being all that shit, I would let that shit go. And I'm gonna just put my energy into what matters, which is not that, because that is only bringing me bad feelings and, and bad everything, bad state of mind, bad everything. And I don't want that for myself. I don't wanna have daddy issues. I don't want somebody that, like I said, had nothing positive to contribute, to contribute negative negativity to my life. Somebody that wasn't even there to contribute negativity to my life. Like, I don't want that for myself. So I'm gonna choose that that's not what is going down. Like, it's not, it's not. I don't, desire a relationship with my father 
I don't desire anything except to be able to let go of even the small amount of bitterness and resentment that I have in my heart because it really isn't a lot and just fill that with just the love that I need to show to my, my people that really got my back and that really been there for me for my whole life not just when they pick and choose that they want to be a part of it or when it benefits them or when it's convenient for them because that's not what being a parent is and that's not what being a family is so I'm not going to treat somebody like they're my family when they're not treating me like I'm their family <sighs> I know this video is all over the place but I think it's really important for me to just express myself I've never really just sat down and just really said everything how I felt and most of the time if I did say how I feel I feel like it was always kind of rebuttaled with you know but that's your dad or oh but don't be like that or you know don't be so mean and blah, blah, blah. like it's not about being mean but like when, when is enough enough? What is a line? Because I'm 23 years old right now and I could say that me and my dad have no relationship. So when, where's the, where's, where's does it end? Like, am I supposed to be 40 years old, still bitter and upset because my father never decided to completely fully step up and take responsibility for me? Um, last thing I want to say is if there's girls watching this or boys or anyone and your father wasn't in your life and is not in your life, I feel like it's something that you have to accept if you can't change it. And what I mean by that is if you've extended the olive branch, if you've given chance after chance after chance. It's totally your decision if you want to keep giving chances, but at some point you kind of have to accept what the reality of the situation is. And as unfortunate as it may be, you don't have to let it define you. You don't have to let that control you or make you who you are as a person. You don't have to. Because I'm not going to let that define me and I'm not going to let that make decisions for me and fuck me up for my whole life. I'm just not. I will hope that it does it. I will hope that maybe this will help somebody because I didn't have anybody to tell me this. I didn't have anybody to really say anything. I just kind of made these decisions and process these feelings on my own. Because if I would have gone with, with with family members and everyone, everyone, I would have still been the one reaching out. I would have still been the one forgiving and forgetting and forgetting and forgetting. Like, and to me, it just gets to a point where who is the father and who's the daughter? So, yeah, I'm not sure if this will help anybody. I hope that it does. If you don't have a parent, if your parent has decided not to be a part of your life, you're definitely not alone. And it's really unfortunate, but you don't have to let it define you. I use these things as a lesson. Um, like I said, this video was really just a way for me to express myself and really close that chapter that was pretty much closed. The book was almost done. And this is just the last page. There might be a, a part two to the book. There might not be. This might be the complete end and then that'll just be that. And you know what? That's fine. I ain't trying to bash nobody. I ain't trying to do nothing but say my experience and how I feel and express myself so that I could really move on. Because that's what I plan to do. Move on. I didn't have a father, but I had an amazing mother and other people. I also have, you know, a stepfather at some points to 
act as a father figure but really my mom my grandmother and my uncle have been the most consistent my mom's side of the family has been the most consistent and i really appreciate them for that so much it's easy and so accepted for men to just say fuck their responsibilities and not or just pick and choose when they want to be responsible and i think that's really unfortunate I think that the people in those men's lives should hold them to a much higher standard, especially the women that marry them and have them taking care of all their kids, but know for a fact that they have no relationship with their own kids. But I guess as long as your kids are taken care of, it's great. So I would say um, I'm really working on letting go of any bitterness, any resentment, anything because that's not what I want to have. I don't want to have that title on my forehead and I don't want to have hate in my heart. And I don't have hate in my heart, but I don't even want to have nothing close to hate. I don't even want to get irritated or any of that just because I'm scrolling and seeing all this Father's Day bullshit that I don't agree with. So what I'm going to do is move on. That's what I'm going to do. I really hope that other people are able to do the same. I know that that's not as easy for everyone, but like I said, just appreciate the people that are in your life and that do have your back because, you know, they really, whether they say it or not, they really do try to overcompensate when it's only one person. They have to. They have to. They have to overcompensate because they don't have the support. They don't have the help. They don't have any of that, you know? So, yeah. That's this video. Um, I hope that this maybe will help somebody else if they feel like they're going through the same thing and they feel like they have daddy issues. Like, let's move on. Like, we can move on. I know we can do it. I know we can. Like, there has to be some way. So, yeah. Thank you guys for listening and I hope this helps.